Hey guys, thank you for joining. Today I'm going to teach you how to calculate period of inferior variations in Power BI. And I'm going to do this step by step as always. So let's do that. So before we get started with the case, let me walk you through the results, okay? So the main goal here is to create this area chart, and this is gonna be a dynamic visualization. Why? Because we have a slicer here, and we are gonna be selecting month over month, variance, for example, and also we can select other period over period variations. Let's give it a try. So month over month, this is changing dynamically. And then if you wanna do quarter over quarter, we can do that as well. Check this out, year over year, we can do that as well. Real quick, let's go over our agenda. Three points here. We're gonna learn about period over period variance calculations in Power BI. We're gonna learn about the DAX functions to be successful in this tutorial. And as always, I have the practical case here, okay? So let's move on to the first point. So what are period over period variance calculations in Power BI? If you have been using Power BI for a while, you might have used this metric. So basically this is the difference between a current and previous period. Like I said, businesses apply this metric to compare sales, costs, or profits. And this is just the example, year over year profit variance. It's basically current period profit minus last year profit, quite straightforward. So now let's move on to the next point. So the next point, these are the functions that we're gonna be using for this tutorial. Highly recommended, if you're not familiar with these functions, please stop the video and check the information here. This is the source, Microsoft DAX functions. So real quick, sum is an aggregation function here. Calculate is one of the most powerful functions in Power BI. Date add, this is critical to find a previous period calculation and also we have first known blank and last known blank. So these functions, the first one, the first known blank returns the first value in the column for which the expression has a known blank value. Quite straightforward, right? And then last known blank is very similar. This returns the last value in the column filtered by the current context where the expression is known blank. And then the other functions, like I said, you can check the source right here or you can check my tutorials. I have tutorials as well about some of them. So let's keep moving guys and let's take a look at the case. So for this particular case, we have two questions. The first question is find a year over year and month over month variation for profits. Second question is create a single area chart and select dynamically year over year or month over month variation. Okay, so let's do that. Let's jump into Power BI Desktop. So this is Power BI Desktop. I'm gonna share this model with you as well so you can play with the data. Okay, I already have a couple of visuals here, but just let me walk you through the measures, okay? So we have right here current. This is the current profit. This is basically an aggregation function. We are adding profits here. And then if we take a look at the other folders here, here we have profit for last month. We're using this powerful function called calculate, the aggregation here, and also the day add function to reference the previous month, okay? So now if we take a look at the other folder here, this is for year over year. So the story is very similar here, same structure. The only difference is that we're using year here as the interval. So now let's solve the first question, my friends. The first thing that we wanna do here is to create a new measure to find the variations. So let's do that year over year, right click, new measure. So we wanna call this profit, okay? Profit year over year variance. So, and then the variance here is just the difference between the current profit minus the previous year profit 
So let's do that. But we're going to be referencing two different measures here. Profit, profit. Current profit, right? Minus last year profit. And guys, we just found the profit year over year variance. So let's approve this change. So let's make a change here real quick. Let's go to model here and then let's drag profit year over year variance into the year over year folder. And that way we can have the right measures in the right folder. Okay. So let's go back to report and let's keep doing the same thing for month. So right click here new measure okay so profit same story here profit month over month variation or variance right and then here so this is going to be the difference between current profit and and last year profit right there it is so for the changes uh-huh it's working perfectly. The next thing that we want to do here is so the next thing that we want to do here is drag these new measures into these tables. So let's do that year over year. So let's drag this into this visual and let's see what happens. There you go. So that's what we have now. So that's basically the difference right between current profit and profit last year. And we're going to do the same for months so let's do that so let's drag this into months there you go so that's what we have right so there is something really interesting here my friends in september 2013 we have data here but then this should be september 2012 right and we don't have data so the variance here shouldn't be this because we are basically assuming that this is zero and this is not correct the right result should be here blank because we don't have data to compare to. For future dates, we might have the same issue. And for this particular case, I don't see that issue, but it might also happen. So we have to make an adjustment here and we want to do that right now. So let's go right here to year over year. We're going to create a new measure here, new measure. So we're going to call this measure profit year over year variance one. How about that? Okay. Next, so year over year variance one, and here we're gonna play with variables, and we're gonna play with the functions that we described in our presentation, okay? So let's do that. If you're not familiar with variables, highly recommend it. I'm gonna share here a tutorial as well. So the first variable here, so we're gonna fix this issue, right? So we're gonna call this first validate profit for last year, okay? For last year and then we're going to use here this function called first on time it's right there here we're going to be using another function called all the main purpose of this function is to remove any filters for the calendar table the date column from the calendar table and then the expression here is going to be profit last year okay profit last year that's going to be the first variable. The second variable, if you're guessing, we're going to use the last validate profit last year. So very similar to the first one here, but we want to make sure that we are limiting the visual just to the valid dates. Okay. And for this particular case, this is going to be last. We're going to use last non blank. And then here it's going to be something very similar. Oops. There you go. Close parenthesis, comma. And then here we're going to use the current profit expression. That's our second variable. And then the other component here is going to be return. And we're going to use here the sum x function. Okay. This is an iterator. There you go. We're going to use the filter function here. We're going to use this function called values. So the main goal of values is to find the distinct values for a specific column. And then here we need to select the date column from the calendar table. 
we're gonna use the ranges, okay? The limitations that we created in the first two variables. So we're gonna be referencing here the date column from the calendar table. So we're gonna limit this to greater or equal than first value date profit last year, okay? So this is gonna be the first variable that we just created. Copy here, paste here. And also it's limited by this. Very similar here. So you're gonna see that, okay? But the difference here is gonna be, it should be like this, and this should be last, okay? Profit last year. And then we're gonna close parentheses here, and this parenthesis is for, for the filter function, comma here. And then for the SUMX function here, we're gonna use the expression, current profit minus profit last year. So let's do that. Current profit minus profit last year. There you go. Close parenthesis. And now guys, we are ready to approve these changes. So what is happening here, right? So the expression is the same, but we are adding some limitations. So we are saying, hey measure, just give me here the values that are real values, right? The values where we have data. That's where we are limiting here, first non-blank, last non-blank, and here we are creating the full expression to get us the right variance for profit. Let's approve these changes and let's see what happens. Okay, so it seems like it's working. So now let's give it a try, guys. As you can see here, so we can write here, just a comma, it's a thousand separator if we want. There you go. So here, since we don't have values here, we are not doing any math. So this is the correct calculation. And we're gonna do the same here for month of month variance. Let's do that. So we're gonna copy this and then we're gonna just adjust the code, okay? Control C, let's go back to month of month, right click, new measure. And what we need to do here is the following, copy and paste, right? We need to reference in here last month instead, see? And here, this is gonna be the same current profit. And then we can also change the name if we want. Last month, last month, here the same story. Last month, last month. It should be last month as well, because we are talking about profit month over month variance, right? What else? I think we are good now. So let's see what happens. It's so probably changes, okay? Okay. So let's give it a try, guys, real quick. So let's drag this into this visual and see the difference. Now, since we don't have values here for profit last month, there is no calculation. So this is good. So we are good now. Okay, so we just solved this issue. The next step here is to create a table. So let's do that. We're gonna enter data here. Check this out, this is really important. So we're gonna name this column. So let's type right here, year over year variance. You can also type right here, month over month variance. You can also type quarter over quarter variance. But for this particular tutorial, we are taking care of these two variances only. The name of the table here, we're gonna call this period selection, if we want. And then let's load these changes, okay? Hit enter, so it's loading. Okay, perfect. So now you can see here, let's check this out. Peer selection, you can see here what is going on, right? You can rename this column if you want, peer, over peer, selection if you want, okay? There it is. Okay, so, so the next step here is to create a new measure 
that give us the period of a period variance in a more general way. So let's do that. So let's create right here a new measure. So we're going to call this profit period over period variance since we are talking about profits, right? For this measure, we're going to use variables as well. Let's create the first variable here. Select period. Okay. And here we're going to use this powerful function called selected value. Selected value here. And we're going to be referencing here the column from the table that we just created. Period selection, period over period selection. Okay. Plus parentheses. So we're going to use return here. We're going to use switch. The true here. Comma. So comma here. And then we're going to be referencing select period because this is the variable that we just created and we are saying okay if the select period is year over year variance so what happens please select the measure that we created previously it's going to be profit so what was the measure that we just created the measure that we improved it should have variance one Okay, and then we are talking about year here, so we need to select this one right here. There you go. If that's not the case, so please select the other option. And the other option was, remember that? Profit month over month variance. Let's close parentheses here, and that's what we have. So let's approve the changes, okay? So it's loading. And let's see what happens. Okay, so here, if we drag this measure into the visual, let's see what happens. There you go, my friends. This looks so much better. Okay, so now we have this slicer here. Let's drag period over period selection into this slicer as well. So now you can easily change from one period to another period, right? So year over year variance, boom. Month over month variance, like I said before, this is really powerful. You can change from one period to another with just one click. See? Really, really awesome feature in Power BI. If you are ready to keep learning, there is some homework for you. How about if you add the quarter of a quarter variance here as well? So you can do that because you already have the basics, right? So let me know how it goes in the comments. So there you have it, my friends. I hope you found this helpful. If so, I have another tutorial here, or maybe here. This is about year over year, growth percentages, calculations in Power BI. Really, really useful tutorial as well. So see you there. Thank you.